Okay, let's create a new scene. Let's add an animated sprite 2D. You can search it for here under node 2D. And this is animated sprite 2D. Let's create the node. Click on it. You can rename it. D doesn't matter actually. Uh, here you can see a warning saying that uh, sprite frame resource must be, must be created or set in the sprites frames property. So let's just do it. Uh, here under animated sprite 2D section and under the animation drop down, mm -hmm. you can see the sprite frame field. By clicking on the empty field, you can create a new one and you can just create uh, animated sprite new sprite frame resource and you can drag and drop it here. Uh, I'll show you how to save this one, a uh, new one as a sprite frame resource and then use it in an other animated sprite 2D node in just a minute. Uh, let's create a new sprite frame resource. So click on it and it will appear here. Uh, this is the sprite frames window or the editor. It lets you create animations using sprite frames. Keep in mind the animation field here isn't the one that we are looking for. It's the sprite frames. Animation through the other way of animation is done here using the animation node, animator node or animation player node. So let's just click on it. And uh, here is all the things you need. First of all, uh, this section here keeps all of the animations that you create. This number one animation is here, which is the default one. And here is the timeline. You can not see anything because we haven't added any frames. Let's create an animation. Let's call it walk. Uh, let's front. Okay, front. Let's see. So we have renamed it, click on it. And let's now see what an animations that we are going to use and the walk here in this is my animations uh, this is walk.png this is what i'm going to be using uh, you can see if i double click on it this is actually a spreadsheet you can see there are a lot of animations uh, and uh, if you have a spreadsheet uh, let's go here and click on it so uh, if you have individual frames, you use this button here. It is as add frames from file. Clicking this, you'll go, be able to go to the file inspector and go anywhere and select individual frames. Uh, since we are using a spreadsheet, we need to cut frames from the spreadsheet. Let's click, cut it and click this button, this grid icon and add sprite from spreadsheet go to the area where our sprites are this is the walk png and we double click you can see now this grid here shows the cut so where we are want to cut you can con hold control and use the scroll wheel to zoom uh, or you can use this so uh, how do we cut there are multiple ways uh, the best one is just counting the number of horizontal rows and vertical columns. Uh, let's just count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they are like uh, horizontal eight, Hor eight horizontal. That's two, uh, eight. As you can see now eight horizontal. And for vertical, it should be one, two, three, four, five, six and six uh, the naming is uh, kind of flipped like it should be vertical for this one and horizontal for this one but it doesn't matter <laughs> okay now that we have cutted it uh, we need to select the frames uh, let's go with the forward frames select these uh, as we selecting them a small number shows which frame position it's the frame is going to be so this is frame zero frame one two three and so on and so forth so uh, another tip is that if you know what size is each of your frames are, you can just enter it right here. You can see all of the frames are 48 by 64. Then there is separation. Uh, this is just to kill the empty spaces between the sprites. 
For example, if I go with the uh, horizontal separation, you can see that all of the highlighted areas are going to be removed. So you can only select these gray areas. We don't need that because like empty pixels mainly just disappear. So I don't think we need to cut them. Uh, let's click this and shift and yeah, we've selected all of them. Add frames. And now we got this guy here. Uh, you also need will do, need to do the texture and the filter settings. How do we need to do that? Uh, right now it's using the inherit filter. That means any settings that you have done in the project settings will be inherited. Let's go to project settings and select for filters. Filters under rendering and the textures and default texture filter. I've set it to nearest. By default, it's ne linear. Nearest is for, pic for pixel art and linear is for traditional high res art. Okay, let's get out. So, it's on inherit. You can change it to nearest if you want to change texture filter for a specific sprite and don't want it to change for every single sprite in the game. Okay, since we are using pixel art, we don't need that. Let's click on the animation again, sprite frame again, and let's play this. As you can see, it's pretty slow. So we need to change the number of fr like uh, frames per second. Uh, let's click this, and it's five right now. And let's change it to 12. 12 is pretty standard for, you can use a higher or lower number, I think. Eight is good. Yeah, I think eight is good. So now we need to create another animation. It's front. Let's make another one. Uh, you can see this. I can add an animation and it's going to add another animation. These are separate from the previous one and all have their different settings. So let's go ahead and you can see this button I forgot to mention. This is for animation looping. Uh, try uh, just you can see that it's now turned off and now it's turned on for walking animation it should loop so try, turn it on for some animations you don't want it to loop so you can turn that off by default it's turned on so new animation let's rename it to walk hmm, let's see walk side yeah walk side uh, naming should be consistent because you are going to be using these names in an animation. So try to be like use good naming. Let's go ahead and click the same icon and select. You can we are already in the folder. Select this, open, and it's already cut off. Let's zoom in holding control, and you can see we have sprite for movement. Let's see which one we are going to use. I think these ones look good. Uh, yeah, these bottom ones, these are pretty nice. Let's select these and yeah, seven frames, eight frames. So let's try to play it. Uh, it's a little bit slow, so eight frames. Yeah, this should do the trick. So we got two animations set up. Now, Let's explore some other features. Let's pause the animation. If you go to Inspector, you can see uh, three properties. Uh, first, is, first is the animation. You can select the animation that's playing by default when the game like starts in the scene. And this is the frame count. Uh, this property can be customized and used in the code as well. So you can do things like when this particular animation reaches at frame five, like this, then do that thing. And then of course the speed, for example, you like add a speed thing to your game. So you can speed up the animation as well. There are things like offset and Z horizontal and vertical flipping. For example, if you're using this one, for going left, you can just horizontal flip and this will go right or the opposite. 
uh, same for vertical as well uh, if any case you want to use it and then it does have all of the other node 2d options that every canvas item and node 2d has so i think we don't need to discuss these uh, these properties have been like every node has these properties so uh, let's dive into coding of it let's create a new script on this node 2d so we can learn how to reference to let's create a new script and just create it oftentimes you need a reference to it a good way is just hold first you just hold and drag it right here wait a minute uh, okay. so you hold drag i think my mouse isn't working quite right today so so you hold and drag it right here and leave it to leave this reference but you can just do this cut, hold and drag it here and hold control before leaving. So you have hold, bring it here. Uh, let me do it again. So you first, without holding control, drag it into the inspector and hold control without before leaving. And it's going to create an automatic on ready variable and a reference. It's a really neat trick. And you can rename it here. And then just name it anim and yes that's it that's it now you can initialize an animation in the ready function or you can set up code for playing a certain animation let's go ahead and do something uh, let's add a camera so we can see it properly and let's go i'm just going to do it real quick okay that should be fine that should be fine and let's save the scene that's so and let's go here uh, let's give you a little simple if condition so if input dot is action sh action pressed uh, i have created some so let's just use ui uh, except no like ui right yeah i think ui right should be good and then you can just call it anim and then it's the name of the variable dot and play and this is the function uh, that can be used it's a built-in function you can create the function and write the name of the animation remember we need to use like consistent name that's where so let's go i was gonna play like an walk side I think yeah walk side and let's create an else and otherwise just I'm gonna play Adam dot dot play not pause sorry play uh, let's see walk front uh, it's simple code really simple code Let's save it and run current scene here. So it's gonna be playing the front animation until unless I play, click the right button. You can see it's gonna now come. We have only these two animations set up, so it's gonna be playing only these. So that's just the gist of it. <laughs> okay, uh, there are multiple different functions. Uh, if you hold control and again you actually go to any of these properties like display you can see it's underlined now if you click on it the animated sprite 2d class reference it's gonna open it has all of the function that this class has uh, links to some online tutorials on the GitHub website as well it's got the definition it's got all the functions enumerals method signals so all of the animation like information is here so you can just check it out it's offline built into the game engine so yeah i think that's it for today's video and i'll see you in the next one